Hey everybody, Jared with Second Life Design. Welcome back to Milling Monday. I am getting back to some chainsaw stuff. I think in the last chainsaw related video, milling related, I showcased my new chainsaw. I'm gonna turn the camera around in a bit and I got the bar mounted on it and it is a beast. Uh, it, it's just a monster. It's laughable how big this thing is. But I'm gonna also talk about breaking in a chainsaw, whether, you know, what ways to do it, whether it's needed, basically whether it's needed or not. So follow along and let's get to it. All right, I just wanna show this really quickly, but uh, we're not gonna to get too much into the bar tonight, but I wanna show this off, it looks insane. There's the power head. That thing is way bigger than a 661. And here is the bar. Keeps going and going and going. There it is, 74 inch bar. That is what I'm gonna run on my new mill. This should net me, I'm hoping around 68, 69 inches of milling width. That's what I'm hoping for. That would be a really huge number, but that's what I'm, that's what I'm wanting. That was the goal behind all this. So we're gonna get into assembling the mill and all that uh, in the coming weeks, but just wanted to show this off to you guys tonight. Now let's get into talking about that guy and breaking it in or not or how or my thoughts okay talking about the power head for a little bit when I bought this I put a picture up on my Instagram and I had some people comment on what my break-in procedure is you know for small engines of you know even so this is not a so so small of an engine what's the break-in procedure how do you get it ready for service? You know, how much time do you put on it before you start milling with it? And it's a very simple answer. I don't have one. I put gas in them and I run them. I do not believe in a break-in procedure in 2021. I, I think of it as the same that uh, 30 years ago, you know, the auto manufacturers would say, change your oil every 3,000 miles. And today, you know, my Altima that I'm, I, I've driven forever. The dealer told me every 5,000 miles. If I went to synthetic oil, every 7,500 miles. So, you know, what, what happened to the 3,000? Technology has improved. Oils have improved. Uh, bearings have improved. There is not the need for the break-in period. There's no, going to be no wearing in of bearings as it's going on. You, you know, I look at it from, from the point of the manufacturer. They're not going to put out a $2,200 chainsaw and then rely on the, with a full warranty, mind you, and then rely on the end user to do a break-in procedure on it where you, you need to run it at half throttle for 30 minutes or run so many tanks of gas through it with, at medium load or what, you know, they're not going to, they can't rely on that. They have to put it out and just put out the best equipment they can and that's it. There's not going to be any problems. They've, they've eliminated all that. I looked through the owner's manual. It has every adjustment on there, every procedure on there for mounting everything, adjusting the carb, all that. Nothing about a break-in procedure. It is an old wives' tale. Guys, I, I don't know what else to say. These are my beliefs. You know, I was a dealer mechanic for a long time. You have to look at it from the perspective of the end user, of the, from the manufacturer. They are not going to depend on the end user. They are going to put out a good product that's just going to be bulletproof and that's it. Uh, talk to tree services in your area and find out how many of them do a break-in procedure. How many of them buy their saws, you know, they buy three or four saws throughout the year. They put gas in them and they run them. That's it. That's what they're going to do. I, I, don't, I can't think of a way of measuring how, you know, how much longer you're going to get out of a saw if you were to not break it in you know, and what that, what the process is really doing, you know, of the, you think of when it was 30 years ago, you were trying to, you got to wear in the bearings a little bit, I'm sure is the thinking. I don't, it's just not needed anymore, guys. You know, I it can come up with a million different examples. Take care of your saws 100%, you know, run good gas, you know, put a fuel stabilizer in them if you're not using them for a long time. But as far as the, the big convoluted uh, break-in procedure, I just don't think it's needed. This is my belief, that's my thoughts. I'm sure people are gonna disagree with me and that's fine. I'm just sharing with you my, my reasoning behind it. I 
don't think if someone wants to do it, I'm not going to stop you. I don't think it's absolutely, it's not going to be do any damage. That's for sure. It's not going to hurt anything. To me, it's just a function of I bought a thing. I'm going to use it. I don't need to baby it along the way. This thing is not going to be babied. It's going to be used to make cuts that are five feet wide in good central Illinois hardwood. So that's what I can say. That's what I got for tonight. I will be assembling the mill in coming videos. I think I'm actually going to do one longer video that will not be part of Milling Monday. It's just going to be a video on assembling the ultimate you know, Alaskan mill. That's It's going to be all the stuff. It's definitely going to be longer uh, where I'm going to sh share my kind of assembly tips and tricks. So look for that as well. It'll be on a different time and just kind of whenever I can get that put together. So I appreciate everyone sticking with it. If you have any other questions, uh, you can message me on, on Instagram at Second Life Design. Drop a comment down here. I'll try best to, to answer that as quick as I can. And have a good night, guys.